Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Welcome, welcome one and all to our time of study on tonight. It is a wonderful day. It's a beautiful day because God has given us another day, another opportunity to give him praise. And we are so grateful, grateful, grateful to God for what he has done already in the past, what he is doing right now, and what he will do in the future. And so we yes. give God the praise yes. all the time because God is good all the time. He is good. So we are delighted, excited, thrilled that you took the time out of your schedule to be here with us on tonight as we uh, prepare our hearts uh, to delve uh, into God's word. Uh, we're going to ask our dear, dear elder Barbara Crummel, the one and only to lead us to the throne of grace. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Mm, mm, mm. It is another time, Father, that we have come in your presence. Yes, yes. To give honor, glory, and praise to your awesome, wonderful, majestic name. We thank you, God, for everyone that's on the Zoom tonight. And we know that we're going to learn more about you. Father, we lift up our pastor to you, Reverend Dr. Donnelly Dunnigan Sr. Hallelujah, truly a man of God after your own heart. And we lift up Pastor Adela Khan in the mighty precious name of Jesus. So Father, as we eagerly await what we're about to learn tonight, we know that you're with us, that you love us, and that you keep us when we keep our minds stayed on you. Mm -hmm. Now, Father, we thank you and praise you, give you all the honor and the glory. With thanksgiving, together we say amen, 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 amen. and amen. Hallelujah, amen. Jesus. Amen. amen indeed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. So I am going to share my screen and if I can get my PowerPoint here together. Okay. All right. Where are we? Okay. We're not where we're supposed to be, but okay. Here we are. <laughs> okay. Praise the Lord. All right. So uh, this evening um, we want to pick up on the pastor's um, message. And he spoke about minding your business. And so we are going to uh, continue with that theme on mind your business. Uh, but we want to look at minding your business in relation to taking a leap into healthy living. All right. And so as we do that, we just want to uh, review quickly um, the LEAP, what the LEAP, it's an acronym and what it stands for. Uh, the L stands for living in God's fullness. And in order to do that, we got to let go of the past. And understand that the things that occurred in the past are just a set up for what God wants to do in the present. So we need to make room for the fullness of God in the present by letting go of the past so that God can take us to the next level. And we recognize that every day is a gift from God. That's right. That's why we give him praise as we endeavor to live in God's fullness. And then the E is for embracing God's fullness. In other words, accepting God's fullness willingly and enthusiastically, embracing all that God 
has for us. The A is aligning in God's fullness, meaning that we need to be in the place and the position to be able to experience God's fullness. And then the P is participating in God's fullness as we practice the habit of the spirit. And so in terms of living in God's fullness, one of the criteria for living in God's fullness is that, 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 to mind your business. Yes, you got to mind your business if you are going to live in God's fullness. And so the, the word mind, to mind is to pay attention to. So to mind your business is to pay attention to your business. So question for us, during Lent, all right, during this season of Lent that we started off on Ash Wednesday, what is your business? What is the business that you are minding, that you are paying attention to during this season of Lent? Okay, you can uh, unmute and and you can share with us what is the business that you are minding during this season of Lent. Anyone? Someone? So no one is minding their business? Oh, boy. Oh, Houston, we may have a problem here. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Dr. Dennery? Yes? Okay. Um, one of the things in minding our business uh, during Lent is paying attention to the Lord, focusing on God and focusing on you know, everything that is, you know, the, the purpose of Lent and what we're coming up to. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So you are uh, referencing to the spiritual focus that we have during the, the Lenten period as we um, have our um, Lenten scriptures that we uh, focus on during the morning meditations, uh, particularly and then um, also we have a prayer focus uh, that we have. And as we have been doing, we also are focusing on practicing the habit of the spirit. All right. Yes. So that's our spiritual focus that we have to mind our business in the spiritual aspect. But in addition to the spiritual aspect, of minding our business during Lent, what else are we paying attention to during Lent? Our health. Our health. There we go. Our health. That's right. So for Lent, we are leaping into health and fitness. And so we have an eating challenge. All right. So if you're minding your business, um, you can share what is the eating challenge as it relates to food. What, what kinds of food are we eating in our eating challenge for Lent? Oh, we're focusing on fruits and vegetables and you can only, oh, I'm sorry. You're talking about food now. Fruits and vegetables. Um, mm -hmm. That's the main focus, you know, focusing on the vegetables to be healthy. Um, the water, the 32 ounces of water. Mm -hmm. The hours is eight hours. You can pick your eight hours, but the, the remaining 16 are to fast. And mm -hmm. we should cut back on some of our portions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Excellent. Excellent. So we are focusing on eating healthy foods because our bodies uh, need the healthy foods to nourish our bodies. And of course, water uh, is also critical 
We're doing it during an eight hour period and we are reducing our portion sizes because very often we actually eat more than we actually need to eat. And then for uh, the week one, we were uh, eliminating some things from our meal choices. Mm -hmm. And so what, what was those things we were eliminating week one? Breads and crackers. Breads and crackers. And then week two, which we're in week two, with the breads and crackers, we are also going to be eliminating what? Sweets, desserts, sugar. Sugar. Mm -hmm. Chocolate. <laughs> yes, sweets, desserts, crackers, candy, chocolate candy. <laughs> oh, that's my weakness right there. All right. And so, um, so this is our focus, our eating challenge. So we want to mind our business as we engage in this eating challenge so that we can be successful. And then we also have a fitness challenge. So what is our fitness challenge? To walk at least five minutes a day, or if you're already walking, walk a little bit more. If you can't get outside, you can walk in place. You can sit in your chair and walk and just doing, um, trying to challenge our bodies to do a little bit more physical activity than we normally do. There you go. That is it. That's what we're minding. That's our business that we are minding during Lent to eat healthily and then to move our bodies and exercise our bodies because we want to be healthy, dynamic disciples, not only spiritually, but physically as well. And so the question then is, how well are you minding your business with our eating and our fitness? After all, your mind is a terrible thing to waste. <laughs> all right. So don't waste your mind. You got to mind your business. All right. And so we want to focus on being uh, successful and uh, being able to actually um, uh, be successful in our eating and fitness challenge. And so the reason why we are focusing on healthy foods and exercise is because we need to mind our business to get our cholesterol to normal levels, okay? So whatever is normal for your age and gender. And so it is lifestyle changes that will help us to lower our cholesterol, all right? And so I got this chart from the, um, this website called Very Well Health. And so it is, and I was really glad to see this because it's some of the same things that we are talking about doing, eating a well-balanced diet, rich well-balanced diet that's rich in fiber, okay? Lowering saturated fats and trans fat consumption. So things like a lot of the fast food stuff and cupcakes and cookies and a lot of butter and fat and so forth. We want to lower, if not eliminate uh, some of those things and then incorporate healthy fats like salmon, and um, olive oil and avocados, things of that nature. And then it has here exercise regularly, all right? Right now, we're basically just focusing on walking. If you do additional exercise, you go to the gym and work out, you go on the treadmill, whatever, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. But we just want to make sure that we move our bodies. And then avoid frying your foods, avoid fried foods, and um, stop smoking. So these are the things, the lifestyle changes that's recommended to help to get our cholesterol under control. And then we also want to mind our business to get type two diabetes under control. And so these are some of the things that is suggested um, on this health website. Um, so you take your 
blood pre your blood um blood sugar levels um you monitor it with a, a monitoring device so that you can know exactly where you are and what you need to do and to make sure that you keep your blood glucose glucose within the recommended range all right and so avoiding sweets and candies and sugars is definitely going to help us eating within an eight hour period also helps to keep our blood glucose level in balance and then of course eating a balanced diet um taking the medication as prescribed and maintaining a healthy body weight. So you want to be in a normal weight for your age and gender. All right. So to get your weight under control, we want to mind our business so that we can get our weight under control. And why do we want to do that? Why is our goal to lose one pound per week? Well, obesity is associated with several serious health conditions, okay? And these health conditions like high blood pressure, diabetes, and heart disease, they are exacerbated if um, you are carrying too much weight. And therefore, these uh, particular uh, health conditions actually shorten our lifespan. So we want to make sure to be able to get these things under control, under control. To help to reduce your weight, it says regular physical activity. That's our fitness challenge. A healthy diet, that's our eating challenge. All right. So the things that we are supposed to be minding our business as we are doing our eating challenge and our fitness challenge is helping us to be healthy. And then we want to mind our business to get high blood pressure under control. All right. And so on the website, this is what it says about blood pressure. When your blood pressure is high, your heart is working harder to pump blood through your body and bring it back to the heart. The force and the friction this high pressure creates can cause stretching and tears in your blood vessels. In addition to the damage to your overall cardiac cardiac and circulatory system. Some, hold on. Okay. Let me just make sure everybody's muted. All right. Okay. So high blood pressure um, causes damage to our heart and our circulatory system. And so that's why we want to make sure that we have high blood pressure, that it is under control. Risk factors um, that we want to um, be conscious of to help us to get the high blood pressure under control is salt, especially table salt. Okay, we need to be careful about that, reduce, or in some cases, if possible, eliminate uh, table salt. Lack of exercise, that's why we need to exercise. Obesity can compound the high blood pressure, cigarette smoking, heavy alcohol use, low intake of vegetables and fiber, and then look at this. We may not think about these other two things, but they do have an impact. Lack of sleep and chronic stress. Okay, If you're stressed out, then that can also have an impact on your health. That's why it's so important with, our, with practicing the habit of the spirit that we sit still. That helps us to... And as we breathe in and out slowly, that helps to, 
to um, relax our bodies and reduce the stress levels. And then, of course, when you pray and you're praying to God and casting your cares and your burdens on him and reading his word, all of that helps us to relieve stress. All right. So to help us in minding our heart health. On this past Monday, we were um, privileged to have with us Dr. Yolanda Henley, who is a certified interventional cardiologist. Okay, that's a whole mouthful, but basically it just means she's done a whole lot of studying uh, to be qualified and bona fide. And so with over 18 years of medical experience, she agreed to come and share with us why it is important and critical to mind our heart health. So I want to share uh, with us uh, the presentation that she did for us on our Medical Monday. So I want us to really pay attention. The focus of the presentation is on the health of our hearts and why it is important to mind your business in regards to the health of your heart. Hey, welcome everyone to our first Medical Monday. We are excited. We got Dr. Henley with us. And um, I'll just tell you a little bit about Dr. Henley. It is Heart Health Month. So the fact that she's able to join us tonight, we are just thrilled. So medical school training at the University of Florida. She then went on to do her residency in internal medicine at Johns Hopkins. Then she later left Hopkins and did her cardiology fellowship at Emory. And that wasn't enough for her. So she did an interventional <laughs> cardiology fellowship at George Washington University. So uh, that's a lot of work. And we are grateful she is in our tribe here in Wilmington, Delaware. So Dr. Henley is going to take it away. We've got a few questions that we will ask at the end of your presentation, my dear. And then we'll open it up to the entire body. But again, Dr. Henley, thank you so much for joining us. And if we could sort of focus on Dr. Henley and then allow her to do her slideshow, we'll be in good shape. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Let's go, Dr. Henley. Thank you, Dr. Coker. Thank you, uh, Bishop Dunnigan, for in, um, inviting me here for um, a very important topic. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. Uh, oh. So if you can still hear me, that'd be great, great. So um, just talking about cardiovascular disease, I look good on paper, I don't know about in person, just putting that, that, that out there. <laughs> Um, so what is cardiovascular disease? Cardiovascular disease uh, describes a uh, multiple um, uh, disease processes, one that most people uh, think about or know about are heart attacks, which we call myocardial infarction in the medical world, and the other big one is stroke. Uh, other disease processes include arrhythmia, like I have a regular heart beat, palpitations, uh, one that's very um, familiar to people, especially of older age, is atrial fibrillation. And the other is heart failure, um, which is really big in our community. Um, the others are below. I won't get into uh, heavily given this short presentation, but I'm happy to um, answer any questions afterwards. So why is this important, cardiovascular disease? Once every 33 seconds, someone dies of cardiovascular disease in the US. It continues to be the number one killer for African Americans. And young African Americans between 18 and 49 years old are twice as likely to die from heart disease than their white counterparts and are 50% more likely to have high blood pressure. And as many of you already know, high blood pressure is a huge risk factor for heart attack, heart failure, and stroke. So gender and racial disparities do exist, as I mentioned in the previous slide. Um, high risk are African American women, uh, in addition to other minorities, and women are more frequently more frequently have non-traditional symptoms, where such things as heart failure and heart attack 
uh, can be missed in addition to young individuals. And women are less likely than men to be aware of their overall risk, heart, uh, heart disease risk, especially the African American women as we tend to take care of our family um, at a sacrifice to our own. So where's the silver lining? 80% of heart disease can be prevented. So there's a lot of work that we can do on our end despite um, our ge possible genetics. Lifestyle changes are crucial to reducing this risk. So we're gonna go over a couple of uh, heart disease, uh, like heart attack, heart failure. So a heart attack occurs when their coronary arteries, these arteries sit on the top of your heart, they become blocked. That's our traditional heart attack. Now we've been able to, in the medical world now, to see small, small damages to the heart, which may, may not include these big arteries, may include small arteries, or maybe in a situation where you have a pneumonia, you have UTI, you have bacteria in your blood, where we have small damage to the heart. The a fully blocked heart, a fully blocked uh, coronary artery is considered the heart attack. And that's when you get rushed into a procedure room where someone opens that artery up with a stent or, or a balloon. So what are some of the symptoms? Chest pain and chest discomfort become, is still the number one, um, it's still the number one symptom for a heart attack, even if you're a woman, although women can have other symptoms such as just upper shoulder discomfort, jaw discomfort, or shortness of breath. Some people even break out in a, a cold sweat or just have significant fatigue where they feel like they need to lay down. You also can have lightheadedness or nausea as if you just ate something bad. So what are some of the risk factors for heart attack? High blood pressure, abnormal cholesterol, diabetes, smoking, obesity, and physical inactivity. Some non-modifiable non risk factors include family history. That's a first degree relative, mom, dad, sister, brother, less than the age of 55 for males and less than the age of 65 for women. Why uh, the higher age for women is because the estrogen that we have gives us uh, protection um, throughout to menopause. Other risk, risk factors include menopause. So menopause, we lose that estrogen, right? Obesity, high triglycerides, metabolic syndrome, um, some other disease processes like chronic kidney disease. An another big one is sedentary lifestyle and um, stress, mental stress. I have a patient who can get on a treadmill and go forever, an hour, right? If he plays chess too fast with the younger, the younger kids, he has come in with heart attack twice. So mental stress is, and being able to um, cope with stress and manage stress because it's unavoidable is very important. Another disease process is called congestive heart failure um, that fits under heart disease. It doesn't mean the heart has necessarily failed completely, it's just not functioning the way we need it to function. It's not putting blood out um, and, um, and making it move through the circuit like it should, right? Other things that can impact the heart could be kidney issues, blood pressure issues, having diabetes, or even lung disease. Those things can impact your heart's ability to do its job and can lead to heart failure. And heart failure is really big in, in our community. The other causes include having a heart attack as well as having some congenital diseases. And those are diseases that you were born with. So what are some symptoms of heart failure? Uh, shortness of breath, swelling in the legs, both legs together having significant swelling, lack of energy, not being able to lay down in the middle of the night without getting up, um, feeling short of breath, or inability to lay down at all and having to sleep in a recliner. Um, not because your back hurts, but because you can't breathe, you almost feel like you're drowning. Some people even have swelling in their belly where they can't eat their normal meals. Say you're eating a third of the meals that you ate, uh, meal that you ate before, um, a third of the plate, I should say, um, versus the full plate. We call that fluid in the gut. So it gives you this, this sensation that you are full. The other thing is coughing, a dry cough that you can't get rid of um, if you don't have a history of asthma of, of, of some sort or a cough when you're trying to lay down at nighttime. That can sometimes be related to heart failure. Also, if you have low blood pressure to the, to the brain, you can get this confusion um, uh, symptoms, or I should say low output of, from the heart to the brain. The other disease process is stroke. And um, many of us may have had a family member or a friend 
uh, that has had stroke. So the big thing with stroke is we want the kid to get stroke treated fast, right? So they've come up with this uh, saying, be fast, right? And these are signs uh, or symptoms of having a stroke. And once you have these, and these are, they come out of nowhere, right? It's not this slow progression over weeks and days. It's really right, right there um, immediately. You can have balance issues where you feel dizzy or about to fall out. You have abnormal vision in one or both eyes. If you're observing someone, one of your family members, and you see that all of a sudden their face becomes asymmetric, like you have a drooping on one side of the of the face, that's a that's a, a 911 call. You, you're picking up something, you keep dropping it, you feel numbness in one arm um, or one limb, even a leg or a foot, that, that also is a, a, a red flag. The other thing is speech. You're on the phone with your friend, your friend starts slurring their, their words or can't produce the speech, that's a big time to uh, alert the emergency uh, services to get them to a hospital fast because the longer your, your brain is without blood flow, the more damage can be done. So we know African-Americans are 50% more likely to have stroke. Black men are 70% more likely to die from stroke as compared to their white counterparts. And the risk factors here, again, as in the other cardiovascular disease processes, are hypertension, high cholesterol, obesity, and cigarette use. So how do we get to a point where we can not have these things at, uh, present in our lives or in uh, the lives of our close friends and family members? We want to be healthy, right? Um, and maintain our numbers. So be healthy is something that you can do at home through diet and exercise uh, and make, making sure you can maintain your um, maintain stress that comes up in life, right? And being that you're connected with Cornerstone, that you have that, that outlet where you can go and get that stress managed um, through your faith, right? Maintain numbers. You get this from your, your trusted care physicians and providers that you go to. Uh, where you can maintain your blood pressure, your cholesterol numbers, right? Um, your diabetes, and help they can help manage weight as well um, as you being able to do that at home. And doing those two things reduce risk factors. So we want to be physically active. We don't want to smoke. Um, we want to eat healthy meals um, that's appropriate for us. And we want to maintain a normal weight. Maintaining our numbers, as I said before, cholesterol, blood pressure, and um, triglycerides, which go into the cholesterol numbers, in addition to A1C. We want to make sure that number is at the goal that our primary providers have, uh, our endocrinologists have set for us. Any questions? I know that was a lot. <laughs> but I was that trying was to keep great. it within time. Thank you so much, Ms. <laughs> I mean, that was rapid fire, but I think we all absolutely get it. I have a quick question just to make sure everybody understands. So you've done a cardiovascular uh, uh, fellowship mm -hmm. at Emory, and then you went on to do interventional cardiology. Is there a mm -hmm. difference between a run-of-the-mill cardiologist and an interventional cardiologist. Yes, so there is. So um, when you do the general cardiology training, you do a little bit of everything um, as far as managing high blood pressure, managing a heart failure, um, even managing people with coronary disease. But going on and to do that additional training in interventional cardiology, you're going in to be able to treat patients that come in with heart attacks. So they come in with heart attacks, I get a call, um, and they show me an EKG, I'm like, okay, I need to come in. So I come in and go through the wrist and take a pictures of the arteries to the heart. And then if, when I find the blockage, I take a stent in most cases up to that blockage and relieve that blockage and that stent stays in there. The other things that you can do with interventional cardiology, if you have a congenital uh, disease with a valve or a hole in the heart, some interventional cardiologists go in and fix those. those. So there's an advanced training, either one to two years of that. Awesome. I, I told you guys she was a beast and I just wanted, <laughs> I, I just wanted to hear you say it. <laughs> okay, so we are going to, um stop it at this point um that's when they went into the um question and answer 
Um, but I thought it was um, so important for us to um, hear from um, someone with this level of expertise um, the things that she recommends for our heart health and to be able to see that it coincides hand in glove with what we are doing in terms of our um, eating challenge and fitness challenge, that we are right on target in terms of the things that we need to do for our heart health. Um, so now I want to just have a little time of discussion and um, just a couple questions for us to uh, interact with. Which is more important, your spiritual health or your physical health? Which is more important, physical health or spiritual health? I would say spiritual. Spiritual, okay. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I agree, but I think that they both are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're saying you you feel spiritual health is more important, but they're both important. Is that yes. my understanding that properly? Yes. Yeah, I feel the same way. Okay, okay. All right, so... Does your physical health impact your spiritual health? Does your physical health impact your spiritual health? And if so, how? Well, if you're, if you're physically not well, well, we're all going to go from here one day. We know that. But if you're physically not well, you can shorten your lifespan. And in that way, it affects you because you're going to die. But, but what I'm saying to me, uh, the reason I put it that way is the our objective is to make it into heaven. We're going to all die a physical death. But our physical bodies are the temple of God, which he gave to us. And I, I always remember this saying I read a long time ago of something. It says we are a gift from God and what we make of ourselves selves is a gift to God. So I think that when we take care of our bodies, we are making a good temple for this Holy Spirit to dwell in. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so I'm, I'm hearing you making a connection right there with the spiritual and the physical when you're talking about the our bodies as the temple and the temple um, in Bible times as well as now is the place for worship and worship is the spiritual aspect but that spiritual aspect we do it in a physical body so if our physical health is, is lacking, if we are uh, feeling bad, if we are run down, if we have the flu and achy body and coughing and headache and so forth, um, does the, our physical um, state impact, have an impact on our spiritual uh, being. I just don't think we can make a good connection. I, well, I'll speak for myself. If I don't feel well physically, I can read my Bible, I can listen to it, but the connection is, there is a disconnect. I'm not really able to take in what the Lord is trying to feed me or tell me because my body is not well and I don't feel good. And 
it's almost like when you don't feel good, you can't process, especially God's word, as well when you don't feel well because, because that's just well to me that because your your body, your temple of God is not working properly, and even though you're trying to hear Him, your body is just saying, "Look, I can't do it right now." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it it makes it more difficult to. Um, do the things that we want to do to 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 give God praise. And it's not that we cannot praise God when we're not feeling well, but it is more difficult to to give the praise and the honor and the adoration that we would normally do. Um, it's more um, uh, difficult if we we have uh, excruciating pain, you know, now we may, um, it may cause us to pray and cry out to God to help with the pain. All right. Okay. In that sense, but in terms of, let's say, just practicing the habit of the spirit and sitting still and praying and inhaling and so forth. If you're not feeling well, your focus tends to be on whatever your ailment is. Mm -hmm. And so um, your, your, your physical health um, can have an impact on the spiritual practices that we would normally engage in, in terms of, um, you know, things like, uh, uh, reading the word and, and praying and so forth, because we are focusing on the pain and the problem. Well, that's one of the reasons why I admire, Christians who are so grounded, like going through cancer or going through uh, serious illnesses for long periods of time, yes. and they still um, are able to tune into their spiritual life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have a lot of admiration for uh, Christians that I know who can do that. Yes. And it it is um, it is difficult, you know. Um, it's difficult to do that, um, but very often it is as a result of having built up their spiritual, mm -hmm. um, their 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 spiritual and their their maturity, having the level of spiritual maturity. Um, to be able to um, put their physical ailment in perspective. So we talk about a sacrifice of praise, giving God a sacrifice of praise. Well, that comes from our, our, our temple. It comes from our temple, a sacrifice of praise that we're going to praise God regardless of the situation, regardless of the circumstance, Okay. But that that is a maturity that very often simply comes from um, having gone through so much over a period of time that you learn how to praise God and give God the praise in spite of the difficulty. Uh, Paul um, was able to do that, but it took some time for him to get there. Even the great apostle Paul, if you recall with the thorn in his flesh, he prayed three times to the Lord. And each time he prayed, the Lord said, no, I'm not going to take it away. My grace is sufficient. But he still went back and prayed. It, it was sort of such a magnitude that he wanted God to take it away. And so he prayed a second time and God says, my grace is sufficient. He says, I've given you this thorn because I need to um, balance you out so that you don't get too prideful because of all the revelation and the things that I have honored you with. Uh, the tendency would be for you to become prideful. So in order to balance you out, um, I have given you this thorn in the flesh. And he prayed a third time, even with all of that, even with the explanation, because God 
understands, does not have to explain to us why we may be going through certain things. He doesn't have to give us a reason why. But in Paul's case, he did. He explained to him. But even with the explanation, Paul prayed a third time for it to be taken away. And the third time, God said, no, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. And so after having gone through that process and now accepting God's will, now Paul says, now therefore, now finally, he says, I am able to boast, gladly boast in my infirmities so that the power of God can rest upon me. But understand, even the great apostle Paul, he had to grow in that area in order to come to that place of being able to give that sacrifice of praise in spite of the physical difficulty that he was dealing with. So, um, so yes, that is absolutely um, something that um, requires spiritual maturity to get to that point. All right. Um, how does your physical health impact your service to God and to others? How does your physical health impact your service to God and to others? Well, um, if you're got uh, physically weak, I would say, and uh, you might have a ministry to go and visit people, you mm -hmm. might not have the strength to do it. Mm -hmm. you might have a ministry to teach but you don't have the strength to do that or mm -hmm. to sing and you won't have the strength to do it so when your physical health is not right you can have difficulties being able to praise or worship or um, do things for God you know because you're physically unable to do it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely and so the reason that we are focusing on our physical health, okay, we are not excluding the spiritual part. We are also practicing the habit of the spirit and making sure that we are building up our spiritual health as well. But the problem is that too often we tend to neglect our physical health. And we neglect it by simply just eating things that are just not good for us, not good for our physical bodies. And so the things that we eat actually break down our bodies because we're not minding our business. We have to mind what it is that we are feeding our bodies, just like um, your car. You have to do the things and maintain your car so that it can serve you well for a long time without breaking down. But if you put sugar in your gas tank, you got a problem. <laughs> the car isn't going to work, right? So if you put too much sugar in your body, your body is going to react in a negative way and then ultimately develop diabetes, and that can impact your heart and you have issues and so forth. So we want to mind our business with our health. And a large part of that is what we eat. So we have to mind the things that we're eating so that we're eating healthy foods, not a whole lot of fast foods, um, but good foods, nutritious foods, heart healthy foods so that we can, our bodies can take the food that we put in it and use that to repair and renew itself. And then a huge factor also is inactivity that impacts our health. 
So we want to move these bodies. You don't move them, then they get stiff and then they don't want to move at all. So we want to move our bodies to whatever extent you are able to move. You don't have to compete with anybody else, but you do what you can do. And so movement of our bodies, if it's one to five minutes a day that you are focused on minding your fitness challenge and moving your body, even if you can't do a lot, whatever you do is more than nothing. It's better than doing nothing. And so we want to do these things so that, as Dr. Henley said, um, we want to um, uh, be, be healthy, eat healthy, plus um, getting our numbers, our cholesterol, our diabetes, our high blood pressure numbers under control and our weight under control. If we can do those things, mind our business and do those things, then it will reduce our risk of, of, of either developing um, one of these diseases or if we already have it, it's going to be able to reduce the risk of us probably dying from um, you know, one of those um, complications from one of those um, diseases. Now, and uh, picking up on what um, uh, Diane said, and, and I agree wholeheartedly, okay? These bodies are going to eventually break down. They're not built to last forever, okay? So some things are going to happen to the bodies and we're going to die from something. However, However, we can um, extend our lives by healthy eating, exercise, and so forth to the extent possible, to the best of our abilities, so that um, for whatever time God has us on this earth, we can live a healthy, quality life. All right. And we do that not only for ourselves, but we also do it for our loved ones as well. OK, so that we can spend time with our family and friends and and have good health and be able to to to, to do things, to serve God, to serve others, to be able to participate in activities and so forth. We want to be able to live not just a long life, but um, a good, long, healthy life quality of life. And the way we do that is by taking care of our temples, our bodies, minding our business, minding what we put into our body, minding our physical activity. And so we have our uh, challenge for Lent. And um, I, I pray, I'm not going to put you on the spot. <laughs> to say whether you are or you aren't, but um, I am going to ask in our, just a final few minutes, what, what things are maybe helping you to be able to do the challenge successfully or what things might be hindering you from doing the challenge successfully? If you could share, you know, some of your tips may be able to, help someone else so what things might are you doing that's helping you uh, to be able to be successful and maybe what things are hindering you from being successful would anyone like to share one thing that's helping me um, be successful mm -hmm. is what I do I um think about the sacrifice and the pain that Jesus went to me mm -hmm. for me mm -hmm. so I tell myself that little hunger pain <laughs> is nothing compared to what Jesus did for me mm. so I have to focus on that and not um oh I'm hungry <laughs> mm -hmm. so um but the one thing that's hindering me that I'm having a challenge with is the 8 hours I'm having a difficult time eating um before six o'clock 
because I get off at five, so it's kind of difficult, but oh, mm -hmm. I'm getting there. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, one of the things that helps me, because um, this week is the no sweets and candy and so forth, and um, and I, you know, I'm a chocoholic, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, so, but what has been helping me is I've been redirecting my thoughts mm -hmm. about um, what is sweet. I'm redefining sweet. And so I, I, I like pineapple and I like strawberries. So when I'm thinking about, in, instead of thinking about, oh boy, I really would like to get some candy now or something, um, I, I, I change that thought to, hmm, my, I can't wait to, to get some pineapple or I can't wait to, you know, eat some strawberries. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, I'm kind of retraining my brain to right. think on something that's good that I like, that's tasty, um, as opposed to something that's not good, um, that's, that's, that's sweet, but not good and changing it to something that is sweet, but good. Mm -hmm. um you know for consumption for for the body and so that that is something that um has really been helping me and i'm finding that to be um to be really good actually so um i'm really glad about that all right okay our time is just about up we just have a couple minutes um one of the things I I just mentioned in our, our closing minutes here, um, one of the things that kind of startled me in the presentation was when she said that every thirty three seconds someone dies from a heart attack. So in the time in the hour that we've been here on this Bible study, if it's every 33 seconds, so that's every half a minute. So if we have 60 seconds, um, um, I'm sorry, it's 60, 60 minutes in an hour, right? Okay. Yep. So it's 60 minutes in an hour. If we have every minute, two people die from a heart attack. So in 60 minutes, 120 people. 120 plus. Right. So you have 120 people. Just yeah. during the time that we've been here on this call, 120 people have died from, just from a heart attack. So it is something that's very, very serious. And so we want to mind our business. Our business is taking care of God's temple. He's giving it to us as a gift. And we can give it back to him as a gift as we take care of it and are able to present it to him as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to him. And that's our goal for our Lent, for our eating challenge and our fitness challenge. Present our bodies to God, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. All right. So with that, our time is up. So we are uh, going to pray and then and close out and then say our uh, final greetings all right so if um miss um uh, miss linda would you um close us out in prayer please let us pray dear heavenly father we come before you with bowed heads humble hearts we come before you praising you because you are god and you're God all by yourself. You are the beginning and you are the end. You are the author and finisher of our faith. 
And we cannot praise you, dear Lord, without thanking you. Thanking you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thanking you for calling us out of the darkness into your marvelous light. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to eternal life. Thanking you for allowing us to have these bodies that you've loaned to us mm. and for us giving us the opportunity to present ourselves to you as uh, our bodies as living sacrifices. And we say thank you, dear Heavenly Father. We ask that you will strengthen us so that we will be able to do the things that we've been challenged with in terms of our spiritual well-being and our physical well-being. Help us to Heavenly Father to grow, mm -hmm. and to grow spiritually and to grow physically and physically meaning a better, healthier body. Uh, mm -hmm. We ask that you will watch over us and keep us as we depart from this place. And we ask a special blessing upon uh, Dr. Dennery, your uh, messenger for this evening. Bless her and keep her and strengthen her in the way that you would have her to grow. We pray that uh, for the absent part of, of this body that is not with us tonight, and I did use the word body, help this body, help us in body in terms of individuals and corporately to grow as you would have us to grow. Um, we pray that you will watch over us and keep us until we meet again. Um, we ask that you strengthen us and keep us. And I thank you to Heavenly Father for giving us the mindset and the desire to want to be on this call, to learn how to be healthier disciples, to learn how to uh, have stronger and better uh, physical bodies so that we could better serve you. And I also pray to Heavenly Father that when others see us and see our physical body, they will be able to see the love of Jesus Christ. These are the blessings I ask in your name. Amen. 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 All right, you can unmute and say your final greetings. Right. Everybody Good have a blessed night. night. Thank Good you night. too. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Yes, everyone be blessed. Well, Good night. Good night. May be blessings. Good night. Good night. Good night. Dixon's good night. Good Thank night. you. Good night. All right, Sister Valerie. Good night, everyone. Mm -hmm.